759 WIFO FM in Jessa. Big Dog Country Radio 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show here on this Tuesday morning, 26th day of April. It is brought to you by O'Quinnan Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, and First Southern Bank. Hi, Wayne and surrounding counties. This is Sean O'Quinn with O'Quinn and Associates. The one constant in life is change. Throughout our lives, we will go down roads that we never imagined. I have decided that it is time for me to make a change. I have decided to start my own independent insurance agency. What does this mean for you? Better rates and multiple companies. Give us a call at our new number, 912-385-1000, or stop by and see us. We are still at 212 South 1st Street, and we look forward to serving you. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings in Wayne County is a popular thing. To dine or take out for one delicious meal, and with the low great prices, it's simply a steal. Famous for the variety of sauces, mild, wild, and senior inferno. When it's time to eat lunch or dinner, Damon's Restaurant the place to go. Located in the middle of town on West Cherry Street, yes, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings simply can't be beat. So next time you're hungry and looking for a great meal, head to Damon's Restaurant and enjoy a great deal. The number to call is easy, 588-WING, 588-9464, the real thing. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, those chicken wings are a very popular thing. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show, right here on WIFO. 105.5 FM and Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio. Two minutes after 8 o'clock here on this Tuesday morning. Bob, how you doing? I'm good. Doing good? Yeah. Let me eat. Uh, I'm getting old, though. I left these rec scores on my desk, so I want to run down the rec scores from last night before we get to the show. Okay. In 14U softball, the Marlins beat the Jackets 7-6. to six. In 14U baseball, the Dodgers beat the Braves 4-2. to The Red Sox beat the Braves 7-5. 8U baseball is the Diamondbacks 9, Padres 7, Dodgers 9, White Sox 1, Marlins 12, Braves 2. So, All right. So you got the rec scores on that you left on your desk. I just left on my desk. So. Well, those things happen, Bob. I'm, I'm getting old. Nah, you're not old. I'm getting, for, <laughs> getting forgetful. <laughs> well, we're with the world famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO. And Bob, who do we have as our guest this morning here on the show? Here with us, a uh, candidate for school board in District 2, Kelvin Mock. Uh, he's running against Bruce Harris in District 2. It's a contested race, both on the ballot. It's a nonpartisan race, but it'll be decided on May 24th. But the early voting gets underway on Monday, May 2nd. So. Kevin, appreciate you coming in. First of all, we asked you why you decided to run for uh, school board. Well, uh, I've been thinking about it for a f- uh, couple of years. Uh, you know, growing up in Wayne County and graduating from Wayne County High, you know, I have a wife that's a teacher in third grade, and I, you know, I see all the struggles and uh, problems they go through now. You know, it's uh, but uh, I, I mean, I have a good interest uh, in our county. Uh, I won't try to uh, improve the school system, you know, and help influence. Uh, I want to try to help to influence the school budget where and where the taxpayer money is spent. And uh, I have a, I believe in the uh, quality of the education for our students, and uh, you know, and I just want to see our students get the best education they can get, you know, and. Uh, and uh, with my uh, past business experience and my life experience, you know, uh, I believe I could be a good benefit to the county and to our school system. And 
like I said about the teacher, I want to represent our teachers, you know. Uh, we got to, uh, our teachers, we haven't got too many teachers leaving, you know. And our teacher retention, we got to work on that. And, uh, and, and, uh, but, uh, I just have the best interest in the students and parents in, in our county. You mentioned this. You said the teachers are struggling. What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, yeah, they just have, I mean, so many. I mean, so much paperwork they have to do, and like today, my wife has to go to a meeting after school, and they don't have time during the planning period to get their uh, plans ready for the next day school uh, lesson plans. You know, ready for the next school day because of meetings or te- parent teacher meetings. You know, but that's something uh, that needs to be worked on. I think. You know, and we got got too many. I mean, there's they hiring a lot of out of county, and we got too much experience here in Wayne County that can be used. So, again, yeah, just joining us, Kelvin Mock, running for school board district two. District two mainly the Scriven areas that go beyond Scriv- the city of Scriven. Where's, yeah, where's district two go? It goes around uh, around Holmesville Road, around the Hortense Road, down close to Little Satilla River. And uh, got a little nook right there in uh, Chapman Plantation, around that area too, around 169. Well, for those listening, may not know who Kelvin Mott, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your family, where you grew up, yeah. uh, what uh, you do for a living, things like that. Well, I was born in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, but after a year old, I moved here. No, I've been ready. I've I've been, I've been living here 46 years, and uh, I was raised in Scriven, and my wife's a third grade teacher in Scriven. And I got three kids in the school system, and uh, but uh, and uh, I've been in business. My I had my own business for about twenty plus years, trucking and farming business. So, but uh, yep, yeah, that's pretty much on the about me, you know. Well, one issue in District Two seems to be the the sign at city hall so <laughs> where do you where do you fall on that well i saw where the mayor's that, endorsed you so the mayor's upset yeah. he wants to sign fix nobody wants to fix the sign yeah so. i i haven't got the full story on that but uh from my understanding you know it's not going to take that much money to fix it and you got a twenty one thousand dollar sign just sitting there not being used so that's just like throwing money away you know it needs to be fixed for the city of Scriven and for the school, you know, so we can post any updates that's going on in the school or the city, you know. The big question is who's paying for the to get the sign fixed? What's your thoughts on that? Who should pay to get the sign fixed? Uh, Scriven keeps up the maintenance on it, or the city does, I know. And I think the board should have some interest in paying for that, helping pay for that getting it fixed myself but uh that's what i what's what i've heard you know that's what i think should happen you know well tell us what else you want to do like i said you're running for school board so obviously you got some things you want to get accomplished if you get on the board what are some of the things you'd like to see done i mean do you really have the board you got to have votes to go along with anything and well, most, most things the school board does, I tell you, you know, is dictated by the state and the federal government. They mostly rubber stamp everything. Not a lot of local decisions are made. But your thoughts yeah. on the school board in general? Well, I like to see uh, uh, teacher retention been having that, uh, getting that taken care of. Because, like I say, you got too many teachers leaving. Why do you think they're leaving? What's, what seems to be the issue? I mean, do you have I, any idea what the problem is? I don't know. Are, yeah, I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know if it's the way to. I don't know if it's to pay or really don't know what it is. I really hadn't looked into why the teachers are leaving, but uh, I know it's uh, a lot of. Te- I mean, it's. I see what my wife goes through, and I, probably the aggravation of it. I think you know, but uh, there's uh. There's got to be something done about it because why are, I got to figure out why are they leaving, but why are we going out of county hiring teachers and coaches when you got so much experience here? You know, I don't, that's what baffles me. I don't know, you know. 
Once again, Kelvin Mock in the studio running for District 2 school board. Like I said, you asked for this time to come in. Anything else you want to tell the voters? Uh, like I said, when they go to the polls, I said early voting starts Monday. So yeah. uh, there's two names on the ballot. It's a yeah. partisan race. It'll be decided yeah. May 24th. So when people go into the polls in District 2, why should they vote for Kelvin Mock? Well, I believe well, my past business experience and life experience in, in the county, you know, and I uh, dealt with a lot with budget in the business. You know, I believe I could bring – a lot of uh, help with that, help with the budget, and uh, and then trying to let, trying to get, under, let the community understand where the taxpayer money is going, you know, and I think there needs to be uh, more communication with the parents and the community, you know, than what than what there is now, because a lot of, I guess a lot of people get upset because there's. A lot of stuff going on that the parents don't know nothing about, or the you know, or the community. Let's right now, they seem to got a lot of money because they received twenty one million seven hundred three thousand hundred forty one dollars in care back money. So there's plenty of money. Yeah, there's plenty of money. That's yeah. right. Yes, sir. that's right. It's like Santa, what? Santa came early. Christmas came early. That's a, that's a lot of money. Yes. I'm not sure where it's all being spent, but yes, yeah. You have any idea where all that money's being spent? <laughs> I have no. I, I I don't know, but I know some of it probably. Would, you know, it came out of that out of that to give the teacher bonuses. You know, and uh, and where the rest of it's going. That's and I don't know if it's being on used on certain projects that uh, that that are under way well, right now. You know, like the track and the school. You know, I know they're over budget on that. You know, but where's the extra money coming coming from for that? You know. Well, we appreciate you coming in. Anything else you want to say before you go? No, I just encourage everybody to get out and vote. Uh, use your right to vote. and uh, Just early voting starts May 2nd, and, and the voting is, uh, main vote is May, May 24th, and I just encourage everybody to get out yeah, and vote. It'll definitely decide May 24th. Like I said, uh, it's it's less than a month away. Yeah. Early voting starts Monday, so that's it's right. here, that's for sure. So. That's right. Wish you the best of luck. Appreciate you coming in. And, right, thank and, you. Uh, good All luck. Right. Take care. Appreciate right. it. Glad you were able to come in this morning. Yes, sir. All right. Big Dog Country Radio, WYFO, 105.5 FM and Jess. And more of the world-famous Butch and Bob show in a moment. South Georgia weather. Here's your WIFO forecast. Mostly sunny. Slight chance of showers and thunderstorms early. Then mix of sun and clouds. 40% chance of afternoon showers. Highs upper 80s. Temperatures falling back to the low 80s later in the day. Mostly cloudy, slight chance of showers and thunderstorms this evening. Later, partly cloudy, lows in the upper 50s. Georgia Chief Meteorologist John Weatherby in the Georgia 811 Weather Center. Contact 811 before you dig. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties since 1998. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the local nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our administrative office is located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard and Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak with someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia. Working to add life to your days. All right, bottle five point five FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. We continue on with the world famous Butch and Bob show here on this uh, Tuesday morning, twenty sixth day of April. And um, and Bob, uh, you said the um, golf team has a uh, a match today. Yeah, they got a match today at the Country Club. It starts at three thirty. So okay. they're taking on Pierce County, which Pierce is County. always a good team. To play, right. So they got several tune up matches before they head to Okie Finoki on May sixteenth, seventeenth. I think they're playing here today. Thursday and Friday, so okay. three three matches. Getting all tuned up for state, huh? Yeah. The word the country club from RS golfer said they should be in Okefenokee every Saturday and Sunday playing. <laughs> <laughs> get familiar with that course. Get down there and every no cook and cranny exactly. and hill and I mean, and break you know. and sand trap and everything, huh? 
I asked uh, Coach Swilly, had that interview with Coach Swilly yesterday, where the competition is going to come for them. They're saying St. Pius, Cartersville, Woodward Academy, and, of course, Ware County, that's their home course. Uh, they're going to be a formidable opponent over there as well. So it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Looking forward to really going over there and watching those two days. It's a two-day tournament, so hopefully Wayne County can play well. And, and that's bring home May 16th and 17th. Okay. All right. State meet over there for the um, for the golf team. Okie finoki. Yep. Nice course. Nice course. Have you played on it before? Years ago. Years ago. So it's been a while, huh? Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's as nice well, as now that, now that you're a really good golfer and you're store in the 80s, yeah, okay, right. you probably need to go down there and test your skills on the Okie Finoki course since you have mastered Pine Forest. I have mastered it. <laughs> <laughs> I was one around. <laughs> Like they say, a blind groundhog can find an acorn every now and then. <laughs> so okay, it right. was a, it was a good day though. It was a good day it for Bob. A, it was a memorable day. It it like sure is. You, you, have, you, have you gotten that scorecard and framed it? I got, the, I, got the score, I, I still got the scorecard for sure. <laughs> That's the lowest I've ever shot. I figured so you I'm would. Glad to keep that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And of course, the baseball team travels up to what Monday's, Monday's Mill. Mill, Monday's John, Mill in Jonesboro. In Jonesboro. Yeah, I'm head up there. Tomorrow, long trip. I think it's four hours from what they say. Yeah, it's going so, on up there in Jonesboro. Yeah. It's right off the interstate, though. It's not far off 75. Okay. But it's past, I think it's like 40 miles past Macon. All right. So, Get on up there and broadcast the game. The first pitch is at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Our coverage will begin at 3.50 right here on 105.5 FM for the first game of the doubleheader. And you said the second game is 45 40, minutes? 40. 40 minutes 40 after minutes the, the game uh, first on. game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do we know about Monday's Mill? Yeah, and they've got to, you know, they're similar to our record. They're like um, run, around the 500 mark. You know, actually, the question is how good is that region? You know, you just don't know how good that region is. Right. We're hoping our region is better than their region. And I said, we played in a tough region with Ware Coffee. I said, could easily won the region. You know, we lost that 5 1 lead in Ware, lost 2 1 to Coffee. So, you know, it could have went either way, but. Looking at the bracket, the three seeds the best place to be. I said, if you're number one, you win round one. You got to go to Cartersville. If you're number two, you win round one. You got to go to Blessed Trinity. So mm. we go into either St. Pius or Woodwind Cars. So I the, like three, three, the three, three seed, spots are good. Yeah, good seed. Yeah. And, good and seed. we're we're filling the number three seed last year when we way to the final four. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. the where you are in the bracket helps out. Right. I like our you know three game setup. I like our our pitching staff. I mean, as for Kathy. Carson Shaver, Gavin Mixon, all three pitchers have given Wayne County quality starts every time they stepped on the mine. So we play defense, hit the baseball. I like our chances. Okay. All right. The question is, are you going to hit the baseball? I said that's been the bugaboo all year, getting key two out hits, straining base runners. So got to avoid that. But if we do that and play good defense, I think we're going to come out with a victory and move on to the round two. I know one of the last interviews you did with, with the coach there, he said that he's going to do a lot of practicing where the bases are loaded and have hitters up to try to see if we can get a key hit because we had so many situations this year. We had the bases loaded or two men on base and just couldn't get that key hit. So hopefully they did a lot of practicing on that this past week. I so. they, they've done a good job in the last couple of series. To, you know, I said they got a lot of key hits, two two out hits up there against uh, Warner Robbins. They yes, had they a couple did. of two out hits against veterans. So. Like I said, it's, they're capable. I said they feel confident. I was there Saturday when they practiced uh, talking to the players. They they feel good about their chances up at Monday's Mill. So, And I know Wayne County's going to travel, so that's the good news. Yeah, but, I've never heard of Monday's Mill, have you? Yeah, I think we played Monday's Mill years ago. Did in we? Football playoffs. Okay, yeah. Monday's Mill. Monday's Mill. Yeah. Okay. Up in Jonesboro. All right. But it's years ago. It had to be but years I, ago. I just don't remember at all. I've heard of Monday's Mill before because okay. I, I think we played them years ago. All right. Sounds good. Well, the Braves are back in action uh, tonight at Truist Park, taking on the Cubs. They had off last night. They'll have a three-game series against the Cubs beginning tonight. They are at Truist Park. Our coverage will begin at 6.05 this afternoon, right here on 105.5 FM with the leadoff show. First pitch at 7.20, so tune in this evening to Braves Baseball right here on 105.5 FM. NFL draft this Thursday. What are the Jaguars going to do? What, what's, I don't what's know. You were talking about that during sports, Bob. I think what they should be the doing this. Should be getting Evan Neal the tackle to protect Trevor Lawrence. That's what they should be doing. They should be getting the big tackle, huh? Yes. Get that big left tackle to protect Lawrence's blind side, huh? They should remember history when they got Tony Baselli. How well did that work out? 
very well. He protected Mark Brunel all those years. Yes, and sir. They went to the playoffs and got to the – He made it to the Pro Bowl. Yeah, and exactly. You know, he's in the Hall of Fame. Now he's in the Hall of Fame. You got Trevor Lawrence, quarterback. You need to protect him. You go get his blind side protected in his draft. Evan Neal from Alabama is the pick. They don't need a defensive end. It's amazing how these teams just don't seem to put the emphasis on the offensive line, but a a team is as good as its offensive line. I don't know why the Jaguars are picking first every year because they don't know how to pick. Yeah, you got to have that. That offensive line is that's everything. That's Dallas, protecting the passer Dallas and opening think, up the holes for the running back. Dallas you don't have that, you ain't got to. You ain't going to win. Dallas fans think Jerry Jones is one of those people that has his hands. I mean, has to make your. I mean, Shaka Khan's worse because the story is, is. Yeah, they say he's the one that's talking Trayvon Walker. The, apparently, the the uh, GM wants the guy from Michigan. I don't want the guy from Michigan. I saw it. Aiden Hutchinson at the Georgia game, semifinal game, mm-hmm. and talked about how great he was. Guess what? He was a no-show at Georgia. Georgia handled him. Georgia right? handled yeah, him. So yeah. we, need either, we either need we don't that, want, we don't want offensive Aiden tackle or the Georgia defensive. Right. I, I, I don't yeah. mind Trayvon Walker. He's a good player. He's good. But, but I'm just saying, if I'm the Jaguars, my pick is an offensive tackle to protect Trevor Lawrence. For years to come, you think and that Evan these Neal owners of Alabama is the pick? That's, you, I mean, that was a projected pick yeah. for months. Yeah. And now it's like, but I don't understand. There's two days before the draft; they should know who they're picking. Well, they may. They're just not saying. Why not? Tell us what's it. What's it matter? Well, you, you see, wheeling and dealing and keeping really? things out. Know, what are they wheeling and dealing for? I have no idea. They I'm got just the number one pick. Well, why wheeling? say anything? There's nothing to why wheel say deal? anything? This well, is who we're going, going after. Please you know? don't trade the pick. Whatever you do, don't trade the pick. Well, we'll see. I, it's just amazing that these owners who had no NFL experiences come in there and want to try to pick these players. You hire a general manager and a president who have had years of NFL experience, who know how to pick the talent. You hire them. You sit back. You let them make the decisions. And that's how they should do it. But people like Khan and like Jerry Jones and other owners who want to be in there and put their little fingers in there and mess things up, they don't win on a consistent basis or at all. Yeah, let the, let the, let the GM and the presidents do it, especially the GMs, the ones who are supposed to go out there and pick them. Just tell us who the pick is. They got the number one pick. What's the what's the deep dark secret? What's the problem? Maybe they hadn't made their mind up yet. Well, that's the story. The story is the owner wants one player and the GM wants another player, and they're fighting. <sighs> Con, just stay out of it. But they should be getting the offensive tackle to protect Trevor Lawrence. Just that's what they should that, be doing. Yeah, protect that blind side. That's what they said for months. That's what the old yeah. was. Evan Neal, he was the guy. He was going to be the guy to protect Trevor Lawrence. Now we're going defense. I Why? mean, look, yeah, look what happened when Jackson, Jacksonville's very first pick, very first year, left yeah. tackle. In fact, Basella. the history of the Jaguars, only two draft picks panned out. Tony Basile and Fred Taylor, that's it. That's name, it? Name another draft pick that I have out. no idea, Bob. <laughs> hopefully, Trevor Lawrence, I have no idea. hopefully Trevor Lawrence will pan out. But I'm telling you, I followed the Jaguars. Historically, two picks have turned out in the draft. I remember years ago when, you know, the uh, Jaguars started uh, in 1995. And we've been airing the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars every single year since 1995. And for about the first three or four years there, they would uh, bring down the radio affiliates to Jacksonville in May, late April, May, and we got a chance to meet the draft picks. You know, we'd have a get-together, we'd meet them, have a dinner, talk to them, you know, get some autographs if you wanted to, and uh, then we'd get a tour of the of the stadium or whatever the case may be, and, and the owner would come in and talk, and, and the general manager and coach and, th- and stuff like that. They, they did that years ago. They stopped that years ago. They hadn't done it since the first three or four years. But it was always interesting meeting those that group of draft picks that came in. Those that let reporters back in the locker room. They cut that out for the last couple of years because of COVID and all that stuff. So everything's been on Zoom, so it hasn't really been well, What about fun. Atlanta? What, what are they going to do? What's the Falcons going to do? The Falcons, they're sitting pretty. They're, they're sitting getting, pretty? Yeah, there's a lot of good defensive talent on that board. So I, I think they're going to go corner. They're, they're talking they may go wide receiver, though. They may pick the receiver out of Ohio State. That's the projected pick for the Falcons. So they may so go, go for receiver instead yeah, of defensive back? Yeah. Or I, if I was him, I said there's so much talent on the defensive side of the ball, it'd be hard to pick, hard, be hard not to pick one of those defensive players. Mm-hmm. So a lot but, of good defensive players this yeah, year. But, Didn't but, seem to be a good crop of quarterbacks this year. Apparently, there's only a few wide receivers, and apparently, the guy from Ohio State's head and shoulders above everybody. So the Falcons may pick the Ohio State wide receiver. The, okay. the story from Atlanta, though, they're looking to trade down. 
you know, there's a lot of teams that want to move up. Okay. There's, there's they only, may trade down. There's only a few quarterbacks up there. So, personally, I think that the Steelers and the Falcons need to get together because the Steelers need Malik Willis out of Liberty. <laughs> So they need to move up, get that quarterback. All you think about is the Steelers. That's right. tell you. They got the 20th pick, but they need to move up. <laughs> Trade up. Talk to the Falcons. Oh, boy. But this Thursday. Starts this Thursday, Start right? Thursday in Vegas. In uh, Vegas. Remember when the NFL draft, it wasn't that big of a thing, you know? You might see some here, uh, some things about it, but now it's must-see TV, you know? They build it up. I still remember Lynn Hoss. He didn't even know he got drafted. <laughs> I got a, drafted? A player. A, he was walking down the hallway, and somebody said, hey, you got drafted. He said, really? Where? He was at Georgia and got drafted. He didn't uh, even know it? No, he didn't even know it. Yeah, he got drafted. Uh, Who got that's me? That's what he told the story. He said, Red he had, got he had, you. He no <laughs> they didn't have TV coverage back then. I no, think, well, so. I mean, back you know, the draft was, uh, he didn't know much about it. But, but now, he, the last 20 he, years, and, and even, especially the last 10 years, it's become he a major that, event. I mean, he had a classmate tell him, hey, by the way, you got drafted. <laughs> That's amazing. He didn't know. <laughs> no, and Lenny was probably out fishing or something. Like that. <laughs> I mean, he didn't care. But he tells that story. He had no clue. Had no clue. But he wasn't paying attention. Uh, yeah. He got picked and spent all those years up there in Washington. All pro. Got his name up there on the circle of champions. Yeah. What is it? Circle of what? It, uh, yeah. uh, up there. Ring, on, ring and champions. Ring and champions yeah. there at, uh, at the stadium. Yeah. He, needs, yeah. he needs to be in the Hall of Fame where he needs to be. I mean, he had a great career. I mean, you look at his career. I mean, he played I mean, all those years. All those didn't years, hardly ever miss never, a game. Never at missed all. a start. Yeah. I mean, and he lined up against some big guys. You know, the <laughs> Hall of Fame defensive players. Sure that's did. for sure. Yes, sir. But he tells that story. I said, "How'd you know you got there?" He said, "A classmate told me." <laughs> classmate told. Me. That's amazing. It says you says y'all different things now on the you know, back in the '60s. Yeah. Just drafted, no, they, wasn't that big of a no, they turn into a major event. That's yeah, it's a major event. You know, you're, you're either sitting there at the event itself, or you might be sitting at home with all your family and friends around you, and you're living room with the TV camera there, and you get picked, and and then you put on that cap. They're making a lot more money. Than they a lot today. more money today. A lot more money. Well, tonight uh, it looks like maybe the Hawks maybe get. Uh, uh, they may go home tonight. This is, you know, they got they got a win to stay into the playoffs. They've only won one game and they're down three to one. Got Hawks got a win yeah, tonight. Got my fingers crossed. Celtics blew out the New Jersey Nets. They swept the series. Who you? Who, I mean, other than the Hawks, who would you like to I'm, see? I'm, go, I'm a Golden State. I'm You're a Steph, Golden State. Yeah. Why are you Golden State? Because I love Steph Curry. Steph Curry still playing Clay for Thompson. Golden State. Huh? I like Steve Curry, the coach. I'm, I've just been a Golden State fan ever since. Curry showed up. Okay, so you're a big Steph fan. They won those championships a couple of years ago. But, okay. Yeah, I'm, still, I'm a big Steph Curry fan. Okay. It seems like they got all kinds of trouble with the Lakers this year. I mean, just all kinds Lakers. of infighting and finger pointing. and LeBron's a disaster. Yeah, just uh, all kinds of stuff going on there. I don't know why he keeps on thinking he's like Michael Jordan. It's not even close. <laughs> not even close, huh? Not even he's close. not an MJ, huh? If they don't have commercials. I want to be like LeBron. <laughs> And see, everybody wants to be like Mike, huh? That's right. What's the commercial? Huh? That's right. Everybody wants to be, be like, like Mike. Mike. That's right. Yeah. It's just him and Magic Johnson, when you see them and they're talking on a, on a on an interview or a TV commercial, something like that, it just kind of puts a smile on your face, you know? It just They seem to make it, you make you feel good. LeBron doesn't really seem to make you feel good a lot of times, you know, when you're, you're, you're seeing him interviewed or him talking or something like that. So I guess that's the reason why people want to be like Mike. Made him feel good. Not in close. Five time world champion, five time MVP. Mm hmm. Case closed. Case closed, huh? Plus, the Space Jam it was way better. Space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Jim Rome. I know, Jim I don't, Jim Rome's about. cuts down that Space Jam 2 almost every single week. I think he's upset he wasn't. He, he didn't wasn't have, selected yeah, for he the did, He didn't have a cameo in it. He did you know, yeah, the first. He has a cameo in the first one. <laughs> yeah, the first one he had a cameo. The second one he did. He's cutting down Space Jam 2. Jim Rome does all the doggone time. That was a terrible movie. Uh, I never saw it, and now that everybody says I'm out, I, I, I really like Space Jam 1. That was fun. I mean, you had bugs in the gr- group out there. And, if I didn't get and, to see uh, it for free, I'd want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get your money back if you didn't pay to go see it. I didn't huh? pay to see it. That's two hours of my life I just wasted. <clears throat> it was bad. Bad movie. Bad movie, huh? Okay, well, at least we, we still got the memories of the first one. Bugs Bunny, and MJ, and yeah. all the gang there. Larry Bird. Yeah, Larry Bird. You had you had all those stars in there, you know. 
Can't be a, a good old Bugs Bunny movie, you know. He's cool. I mean, he is Mr. Cool, Bugs Bunny is. Still one of my favorite commercials is Michael Jordan and Larry Bird, that McDonald's commercial where they're yeah. shooting, you know, off the Liberty, off, yeah. the, off the statue. Off the wall, off the day, off the statue, right. and nothing but net. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's still one of my favorite commercials. That is a great McDonald's commercial right there with those two. And I'm bouncing it over everything in the world, nothing but net. Nothing but net. And neither one of them missed. <laughs> All right. Anything else going on, Bob, on your mind this morning? You got a school board meeting school tonight? School board meetings tonight. Have a report tomorrow. They should name the new band director. I think they got a band director hired. So. Okay. New band director for Wayne County Wayne High County School. High school yeah. Okay. All right. We'll find out in the morning in the local news at 715. Have a good day, Bob. All right. The world famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO brought to you by O'Quinn and Associates by Murphy Builder Supply, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, and also brought to you by First Southern Bank.